Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a layered material in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to go through the steps of how you can layer up texture maps directly in V-Ray without having to go into Photoshop and edit them there. This could be particularly useful when you're trying to create complex textures that are made up of lots of different maps layered one on top of the other and we can do this directly in V-Ray's material editor. Now to begin with I created this 3D shape and this looks a little bit like this with a sun set up that we've got casting a shadow on that shape and at the moment we've got no textures on there it's just this sort of white material here now we're going to begin by creating a basic material to apply to this so i'm going to do that by opening up the v-ray asset editor from the menu here we're going to go to the material tab create a new generic material there and we're going to call this concrete because I'm going to be making a layered concrete material. Once we've got that, I'm going to select my object, right click and apply it to selection. Now for this particular model, I'm also going to texture map it just by applying a box mapping to the overall piece. I'm going to do that by going to the properties, going to texture mapping here, clicking on the box mapping channel, and I'm just going to apply a large box over the whole of this object. Now I'm not too worried about the size of this because we're actually going to kind of scale in my materials on a texture by texture basis and I'm going to show you how to do that as we work up this particular material. Now at the moment this is just based on this color here and we've just got a sort of dark gray concrete color and if we render that out we can kind of see that applied here and I'm just going to minimize these panels here so we can look at the render as we tweak our particular material like so and we'll just put that on the right of the screen now for this I'm going to start by adding a base concrete texture to this material we can do this by clicking on the texture slot going into bitmap here and I'm going to find a concrete texture here I'm using these free textures downloaded from Polyhaven and some other sources and I'm going to put a link to the in the description of this video of where you can find these textures so you can follow along with these particular materials. We're going to start with this one here and we're just going to load it in as the base and there you can see it's now applied onto the base of that material. Now that's fine for a sort of basic concrete texture but I want to layer this up, I want to add in more cracks and other kind of different textures over the top of this to build up a much more complex texture that is made up of multiple maps. To do this we can actually click back with the right click on our texture slot and we're going to choose this wrap in option. This allows us to essentially put this texture within another kind of layer control and we're going to use this layered option here to create a layered texture map for my material. If I select that Nothing will change yet, but we've got this layer one, which is essentially the base image we have here. Now I'm going to make sure this is just on a normal blending mode because it's going to be my base texture. And then we're going to click on this plus tab and I'm going to add in a new layer. So now you see by default, it will put this on a multiply and it will make this black. So suddenly my kind of object here has become completely black because we've got this black texture that's being applied over the top. I want to switch that out for an image file. So I'm going to click on my texture slot go to bitmap there and we're going to load in this one here which is this kind of rough kind of plastery texture if we load it up a little bit bigger we can kind of see it there we've got this sort of patchy material like so now once it's loaded on you can see it's kind of loaded up there and from here we can actually stack this up much like you would layers in Photoshop you can see here we've got blending options so at the moment it's on a multiply I want this to be on a soft light which is going to be essentially kind of blending a little bit of the dark values of the image a little bit of the light values and have a nice kind of blend between the two we can kind of see it there that we're getting this patchiness on here i also want to scale down the, the kind of size of just this texture map and not scale the size of this one and we can do that if we click back on the map here go to texture placement and i'm going to go to repeat uv and if we do two by two it will essentially repeat that two by two times within that kind of bigger map and we can do it more if we need to so we could go three by three in there and you can essentially scale that map directly in that parameter so you can see it's much smaller on that object now if we then go back we can then tweak the kind of opacity of this at the moment it's on a one i could put it on a 0.6 for example 
and that will make it slightly lighter, slightly more faded there as well. And if we zoom in on this object so we can see it, you can see that's slowly starting to kind of build that texture up. So that's the sort of first layer I've added on. I'm then going to add another layer here. Again, it's going to add that sort of black multiply layer. I'm going to go back to the bitmap. This time I'm going to add in this cracked concrete wall here. Open that one up. Go back again and again. I'm going to put this this time on an overlay, which is a slightly darker version of that soft light there. I'm going to lower that down a bit. Let's put it on a 0.4 for this one. And again, if you find the texture is too big, we can also reduce that. But I think actually at the moment that's working quite nicely. And you can see already we're starting to blend these textures together and we're getting a much more sort of bespoke texture map that's made up of all of these different maps combined. Now you can add lots and lots of different layers here to build up that kind of premise. We can even add a color on top. So it could be this time. I'm just going to add a red on top there. I'm going to put it on a kind of color mode and then maybe we'll put it on a sort of 0 0.3 there so it's very sort of faded so you could actually start to color tint some of these just using this layer mode as well so it gives you lots of control to start to build up these textures and create quite a lot of complexity just in the look and feel of this particular texture and material that we're creating as well as this we can then go back go into our kind of bump map for example go in here and I'm also going to add in a sort of map into this so this time I'm going to kind of go back to one of these sort of like plaster textures I have I'm going to use that map there and because I've already got it in my file I can kind of use it and place it straight on and it will give us some bumpiness again we can play around with the texture placement let's do this three by three this one and there you can see that can give us a little bit more bumpiness on the surface. If it's a bit too intense, we can lower that down as well. So very quickly, you can start to use all of these maps together to really build up these kind of properties of these materials and build up these textures directly in V-Ray. And this means we don't have to go into Photoshop each time to edit our texture maps or edit the color or layering of each of these to create these complex textures. So that can be used in any of these slots as well. I've kind of mostly used it in the diffuse here, but you could use it in the reflection and also the other materials here to kind of build up those texture qualities. I hope you found that video tutorial useful and how to create complex layered texture maps in V-Ray for Rhino. And if you want to watch any other videos on creating textures, materials, or rendering effects in V-Ray, then please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.